What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five games that were relatively disappointing this year as we reach the halfway mark. And with lots of game announcements to come, especially over the next few weeks as all the various showcases take place, I thought it would be a prudent time to talk about some of the games that have both done very well, which we've already covered, which now brings us to today where I wanted to talk about some games that underwhelmed me in the first half of the year and a little bit about why that is. Now, I do like to preface videos like this by saying that in these particular cases, I don't think the games are necessarily bad, just disappointing for one reason or another. In one case, I actually think the game is pretty good if you can get it to run stable. Moreover, I've actually reviewed all of these games, so if you want my full opinions on any of them, I would recommend you actually check out the reviews. Also, before we jump into the games, probably worth a mention, though I'm sure a lot of people are aware of this already, this year so far has been pretty rough in terms of the technical state of many games, with a lot of them simply launching in a state that makes them difficult to play, often because they run very poorly, especially on PC, which is the primary platform of this channel. Which means if you were playing some of these on, say, a console, you might have had a better experience, and I fully acknowledge that. But with no further ado, let's actually dive into this one. Now we're going to kick off the list with arguably the biggest disappointment of the year, and I would say that is Forspoken. And while I think the game had its merits, for the most part it was a pretty under overwhelming title that unfortunately caused the shutdown of Luminous Productions, which was absorbed into parent company Square Enix. But ultimately, Forspoken had a fair amount of problems with, I would say, the most minor of them being the dialogue, which everyone got hung up on. I think the much more serious issues Forspoken had were the sky-high PC requirements, and even on a top-end rig, I was having trouble running the thing smoothly a lot. And that's in addition to many of the other problems that game had, such as having a massive open world that really didn't have much to do. And one thing I noted in my review is that you could find various ruins and read about all these cool events and lore that happened that are unfortunately just not in the game. The combat itself is also very easy, with you being able to win by just spamming basic attacks in most cases, and all of that really detracts from what the game does well, which in my opinion was some of the parkour, which was a lot of fun to take part in. And while Forspoken had a lot of good ideas, I think many of them failed to come together to make a unifying vision, and as a result, Forspoken can sometimes feel like playing a game of concepts rather than finished ideas which is why it made its way onto this list. Now, next up, we have a much more recent entry with Redfall. As I mentioned in my own review, I think the bones of a good game are here, but unfortunately, a lot of the systems are just not in a state where they can be enjoyable in many cases, which really overshadows the otherwise really great atmosphere and world that they built. Because ultimately, there's huge problems with the combat, especially when it comes to pathfinding, probably being my biggest issue personally, Personally, I also think the loot system that is leveled doesn't exactly do the game any favors, especially since you can only really approach stealth with certain guns that have suppressors, but because of the leveled nature of them and the relative rarity of guns with suppressors, it's almost impossible to reliably take the stealth option simply because that option won't actually be available to you. And unfortunately, all of those things together, while I can see the potential of them and what they were working towards, nonetheless fail to stick the landing, which is why Red Fall received such a very poor reception from pretty much everyone, and is even now sitting on a mostly negative rating on Steam. Third up on the list, though, we have a slightly different title with Stray Blade. Stray Blade is a sort of awkward Souls-like, I would call it. A game with chunky graphics and a bright color palette that ultimately seeks to recreate a more challenging combat experience while we explore the Valley of Acrea, uncovering the mysteries of some magic ore that could be found here. But what I found disappointing about this is that for a Souls-like, it had very awkward combat that especially falls apart against more than one enemy, with much of it consisting of flashing indicators that then force you to respond with a timed parry, block, or dodge, and personally I find the flashing indicators in particular a little more distracting than helpful, especially as a lot of them aren't really set in stone. For instance, if you can just simply move out of the way of one of the parry or block attacks, you're still not going to get hit, which means you could have dodged out of the way, of course. So I think those indicators hinder the experience more than they do help it, and that's before we even start talking about the very awkward camera in many cases, and the progression that's tied to using a variety of weapons, which can kind of keep you from forming a more set-in-stone build style, 
as you'll need to use each weapon to unlock the passive associated with it to get the most out of the system, and there's a lot of issues like that throughout. And for all of those reasons, I found it a bit disappointing. That said, Stray Blade, unlike a couple other titles on this list, are trying to address this. They actually have a patch that is in beta phase right now that is going to rework the combat a bit, and if that rework is successful, I think they might actually manage to address most of my issues with the game, which I think will be very helpful. But nonetheless, as it stands right now and at its launch, it was a bit disappointing. Now, fourth on our list, I think we have a very interesting case with Star Wars Jedi Survivor. As I noted in my review of this one, I don't think this is a bad game. I actually enjoyed it a lot. The problem is that the technical state it released in, especially on PC, made it impossible to recommend, which was incredibly disappointing for one of the larger AAA releases of the year. In my own review, I noted that the game crashed a ton, especially on that second planet, and that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as a lot of the widespread technical issues go. Most of my issues were around the crashing, especially on that planet, though. But nonetheless, as enjoyable as I think the experience actually can be, I do think the game deserves its place on this list simply because a great game that is borderline unplayable due to the various technical problems is still incredibly disappointing, especially from one of the larger studios out there. Now, luckily, because the actual core game is pretty fun and a lot of people could see that on top of the fact that it's, again, one of the larger publishers and developers out there, it's already getting patches and things addressed, which is still going to take a little bit of time. So I do think this game will eventually just be a great experience. The way it launched is, I think, unacceptable from a company that large, frankly, which is why it's on this list. Last up, though, we have Wolong Fallen Dynasty, a relatively divisive title from the makers of Neo. This one, however, is set in the Three Kingdoms period of China, but unfortunately, again, we had a rough PC launch here. There's still a few issues that are persistent even now, despite the game launching a few months ago. And while the PC problems in particular are all too common these days, my biggest problem is that a lot of the secondary systems, I think, were uninspired. As I mentioned in my review for this one, it's really easy to get an almost perfect set of gear very early on, but after this we still have an almost Diablo-like loot system that is just constantly dropping loot that you will never use because I made the gear that I wanted just a few missions in. And things like that are prevalent throughout this game, and while I think the combat is actually really fun, I found just about everything else surrounding the core experience to be very underwhelming in terms of systems and mechanics, and while game Games like this are inherently very divisive. This one was certainly a bit of a letdown for me. But that is going to do it for this video. That's been the disappointing launches I've experienced so far in 2023. However, in some cases, I do think they will be fixed up and brought to a more satisfactory place. Because at the end of the day, while some games can very much so disappoint, as somebody who loves video games and loves playing them and honestly wants other people to have that experience too, it's always incredibly disappointing to see games have a very poor launch, but at the same time, I do think we need to acknowledge these things when they happen, which is why videos like this get made from me occasionally. But all of that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, let me know down below about any games you are looking forward to this year, ideally, or games you haven't been having so much fun with is also fine. But truth be told, I'd love to hear what everybody is thinking about what's going to be announced at all the various showcases right around the corner, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.